7.3968 is a squared number. Its square root will be quickly recognized by British antiquarians as a direct hit with a 2.719 foot megalithic yard as refined by Alexander Thom, though it is better known as 2.72 feet. Could it be that the megalithic yard is only a square root? Whatever the case, this squared number 7.396 was widely applied to this ancient matrix system Indeed, it even speaks to Stonehenge. When archaeologists A.T.C. Atkinson and Gerald Hawkins examined Stonehenge, they determined its original diameter to have been 97 feet 4 inches, hence a radius of 48 feet 8 inches, or 48.66 feet in the decimal mode. Could the 48.669344.11, seen as the result of this equation, represent its original radius in modern British feet? One of the exquisite aspects of this ancient matrix is its built-in set of checks and balances. For example, when we take the grid longitude of Stonehenge and divide it by all the numbers it shows us, 2, 15, 60, square root 15, and square root 60, we are left with this. The decimal place is off, but the numbers are exactly twice those of 48.6693 seen in the previous formula. Is it valid? Are these the actual numbers, the original numbers, in the diameter of Stonehenge? They vary from those found by Atkinson and Hawkins by about 332nd of an inch, hardly enough of a variance to notice in actual field measurements. In fact, they are just that. And this figure will be found extensively in the matrix, very extensively. It was heavily favored in Western monuments. Now having it once again, it is a simple matter to log all of the vital measurements at Stonehenge. Finally, the square of the megalithic yard shows us this, when given to double pi. It's another of their weird constants, and one of considerable import. I have come to call it their alternate pi, AP. Here's how it works. Give it to the standard generic 360 degree circle, and find the actual circumference of Stonehenge in feet. It works just as well off the 360 degree radian to find, once again, the radius of Stonehenge. It's why I call it their alternate pi. It's the constant they employed to explain the relationship of their 12-inch metrological unit to their radian-based matrix. I even prefer it to the pi ratio we use, 11772457771. 11772457771. It's poetic. Say it twice and it's memorized. It sure beats trying to memorize pi out to eight or nine decimal places. We now have ten of their constants, having added to the original list the square of the megalithic yard, the radius of Stonehenge, and alternate pi. Is this all of them? No, but it is enough to take us some distance into the decoding process.
and we found most of them right here at Stonehenge. The outer stone circle of phase three conveys its latitude, while the inner display, in conjunction with its 288-foot-wide phase one earth circle, convey its West Giza longitude. Now we know why phase one was necessary. Then Stonehenge goes on to explain several mathematical constants in use at the time of its construction. The decoding is what tripped us up. Who would have thought that it was entirely restricted to maps and mathematics? Stonehenge, a magnificent calculator rendered in rock. Batteries not included or required. The access key is curiosity. The pyramids at Giza, enigmas, mystical shapes, royal tombs, even the work of the devil, depending upon the degree of intellect at work trying to explain them. There are enough books in print about these monuments, most particularly the Great Pyramid, to fill a small library, almost all of which attempt to explain their purpose. Mostly they assert personal beliefs. Those that sound good to other thinkers are echoed and echoed, until they work their ways into the realm of accepted fact. Typical is the continuing assertion that they, along with all the other pyramids in Egypt, about 83 to date, were tombs for the ruling class. For many, the bait has been taken. They are tombs. Despite the fact that we have yet to find the remains of any pharaohs in any of them, well, if Egypt's pharaohs built these pyramids, they were a whole lot better advised in mathematics, geodetics, and astronomy than the written record is able to support. In the absence of written records, we depend on archaeology for answers at Giza. But archaeology lives to dig, to find the tangible handheld artifacts of early people. Unfortunately, digging will never answer the reason for pyramids. The pyramids are mathematical law. They represent intelligence, and intelligence isn't buried. It's left for all to see, above ground and in clear sight. Sometimes they even left stuff laying around that was so obvious we can't see it. For example, matrix vector GV, my code for Giza vector. The two sets of smaller pyramids, 4, 5, and 6, and 7, 8, 9, were aligned to point right at it, an intersection of azimuths. But the builders left nothing, no pyramid, no stakes, nothing at vector GV. Now why'd they do that? To make the obvious unobvious, obviously. And of the hundred-odd books I have digested on the Giza Pyramid site, not one discusses this silent, unmarked point. Indeed, they fail to even speculate on why the small pyramids were laid out in straight lines. It went right by everyone. We already have the grid figures for these two azimuths. 41,252.96 comes from Mexico's Juliaco, the surface area of a 360-degree sphere and the square of the megalithic yard, 7.39685. Dividing the two figures, we are left with GV's value, 5,577.096018. It will serve to demonstrate that we can get something from nothing, GV, if we know the language. Since Stonehenge explained the language, 
there's nothing holding us back. So let's go for it. Three pyramids present each of these invisible lines to vector GV. That's three pi in the language. Apply it and find the grid longitude of Stonehenge, 52,562.89. There are two sets of pyramids involved. That's 2 pi, which finds us the square root of the volume of the 360 degree sphere exactly. Or we can drop pi and divide by the double radian to retrieve the exact radius of Stonehenge in feet. We also have the option of applying the square root of 15 from Stonehenge from which prints out the grid latitude of same. In all, six small pyramids point to GV. That's six pi. Testing, we find the grid longitude of the Sinsunsan Pyramid in Mexico, the 3,100 foot long Sinsunsan, the world's longest pyramid. The tallest pyramid in the world is the Great Pyramid. Grid longitude, 360 degrees. Apply it to vector GV, and we retrieve 15.4919. There's a new number for the pot. And coming off the Great Pyramid, it must have been important. It was. 13 square miles of importance. They laid an entire city out on this azimuth. Teotihuacan in Mexico. Math can be used either extensively or expansively. We have seen how 3 pi responds to vector GV. Now let's turn it around and raise pi to its third power, the cube of pi. Applying it, we find the grid latitude of Monk's Mound at Cahokia, Illinois, North America's largest pyramid. Not bad for a silent guide. See, they didn't have to mark vector GV, just align something toward it. Too bad it took us so long to wonder about it. <laughs>